Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, is psychopathy linked with lower emotional intelligence? If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. That way you won't miss anything new. Now, when we talk about psychopathy, a lot of times we think of the mental health disorder, antisocial personality disorder, as it's listed in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, the DSM. But psychopathy and antisocial personality disorder aren't exactly the same thing. We could think of antisocial personality disorder, of course, as being the official classification, and psychopathy as being a particular version of antisocial personality disorder. And this version has characteristics like grandiosity, impulsivity, irresponsibility, callousness, being manipulative, having a shallow affect, and violating society's norms. So you can see there's a lot of overlap there between psychopathy and antisocial personality disorder. Now, when we think of the term emotional intelligence, we're thinking here of a construct that, of course, is not as well defined as psychopathy, but there is a good deal of research on it. And in general, we think of the definition as perceiving, managing, or reasoning about emotions, both internally and externally. So it's this ability to understand and manage emotions and apply them to oneself and apply them to others in the world. And with emotional intelligence, usually this is thought of as an adaptive ability. So it has a positive outcome. So with higher emotional intelligence, we see certain associations like better interpersonal relationships, fewer problems with interpersonal relationships, a lower incidence of substance use disorders, a lower incidence of violence, and fewer health problems. So then we can make this link between psychopathy and emotional intelligence by taking some of the elements of psychopathy and relating them to what we see with emotional intelligence and realizing that a lot of those areas seem to represent a deficit in emotional intelligence. For example, some of the characteristics of psychopathy like emotional detachment, lack of empathy, relational difficulties, trouble differentiating neutral words from emotional words, and a difficulty in recognizing facial expressions. Also, individuals with psychopathy tend to have difficulties processing emotions. So it really makes sense that there would be this link between psychopathy and emotional intelligence. The theory being that if an individual has psychopathy, they run a greater risk of having lower emotional intelligence. So is this actually the case? Is there this association between these two constructs? Well, to answer this question, I'll be using an article published in 2012 by Ermer and colleagues that looked at psychopathy and emotional intelligence using a population from a prison. So all the participants in the study were male and all of them were incarcerated. Now, studies done prior to this had shown a connection between psychopathy and emotional intelligence, but largely at the non-clinical level. So non-clinical samples and not using clinical assessments. So before I get to the results of the study, it's important to understand how they measured emotional intelligence. It's divided up a few different ways. So at the highest level, we see experiential and strategic emotional intelligence. And each of these components has two components under it. So with experiential emotional intelligence, this is really about identifying emotional expressions. We see two categories, perceiving and facilitating. So with perceiving, this is mostly based on facial expression recognition, and the facilitating is more about rating the utility of emotions. So perhaps something like asking somebody what mood would be helpful for this particular task. Now for strategic emotional intelligence, this is understanding and managing emotions, and this has two parts as well, and those are the two parts, understanding and managing. So understanding is answering questions about emotional progressions and combinations, and managing is considering certain scenarios and predicting the emotional effects of specified actions. So then looking at the results of this study, the findings were actually fairly surprising. When we look at the relationship between psychopathy and experiential emotional intelligence, there was no association. And when we look at the relationship between psychopathy and strategic emotional intelligence, there was a modest association, particularly on that managing element. 
of strategic emotional intelligence. Now we look at the traits associated with that strategic emotional intelligence that had the strongest association, it was just impulsivity. So it was a surprise that none of the other traits associated with psychopathy that would be related also to emotional intelligence showed any type of association, including low feelings of guilt, lack of remorse, callousness, lack of empathy, and shallow affect. It would make sense that these traits would have been associated with emotional intelligence as well, in addition to impulsivity, but they weren't. So this study, like so many, really highlights the importance of conducting research and not just making assumptions that two constructs would be related. It of course seems logical that psychopathy and emotional intelligence would have this negative correlation, but as it turns out, they really don't. And the area where there is some sort of negative correlation is really just modest. So one of the challenges here with a study like this, which was noted in the paper, is that emotional intelligence is really measured based on positive outcomes. We tend to think of emotional intelligence as a good thing, as something that helps people to be productive and improve relationships. But this really is a biased point of view. Somebody with psychopathy may have a value in the ability to manipulate, deceive, and exploit others. And they could use emotional intelligence to carry out these tasks as well. Emotional intelligence doesn't always have to be positive and it doesn't always have to be used for positive type activities. So the difficulty here is really in the instrumentation. The instrument used in the study, and in many of the studies, was designed only to look at those positive outcomes and doesn't really take into account that somebody may want to use emotional intelligence for a negative outcome. Another limitation here is that all of the participants were incarcerated. Now we could look at this as good in terms of it filled a gap in the literature, because a lot of the studies done before this were on individuals who were not incarcerated, but incarcerated individuals are only a sample of a much larger population of individuals with psychopathy and not necessarily a representative sample. They're individuals who committed crimes, were caught, and were sent to prison. And this may be distinct in terms of the characteristics as we compare it to individuals with psychopathy that don't commit crimes or that commit crimes and are not caught. So again, with this study, we had an interesting finding in terms of psychopathy and emotional intelligence, and certainly this indicates that further research would be helpful. The construct of psychopathy is fairly well established, but the construct of emotional intelligence may need to be reworked a little bit to understand how individuals may use emotional intelligence for negative outcomes. This may help us to conduct further studies that look at psychopathy and emotional intelligence from a different angle. I hope you found this description of psychopathy and emotional intelligence to be interesting. Thanks for watching.